In the last two lectures, we have already seen what will happen to the fundamental time period when we perform different operations on time. And to understand this, we took one example signal x1t, which is sine 2 pi t, and then we performed the time shifting and we got a new signal x2t. We calculated the fundamental time period and we found the two fundamental time periods are same. This means fundamental time period is independent of time shifting. This is one important thing to remember. And then we performed the time scaling and we found fundamental time period is not independent of time shifting and the new fundamental time period, the new fundamental time period is simply equal to T naught, which is the fundamental time period of initial signal or the original signal over mod of A. Mod of A is nothing but the amount by which you are performing the time scaling. Then we perform the time reversal and we found T naught is independent of time reversal also. So till now we saw T naught is independent of time shifting and also time reversal but it is not independent of time scaling. Then we perform the phase shift. We had the phase shift of 45 degree in the original signal and we found T naught is independent of phase shift also. So this is all we have completed till now. Now we will start this lecture by taking our sixth signal and in this sixth signal we will perform the amplitude shifting and we will see the effect of amplitude shifting on the fundamental time period. So x sub 6 t is the new signal and uh, I will shift the signal x1 t upward by 1. So I will write 1 plus x1 t or we can say 1 plus sine 2 pi t so this is the new signal x 6 t and to calculate the fundamental time period t naught we will use the formula 2 pi over omega naught omega naught we can have from here 2 pi is the omega naught so we have 2 pi over 2 pi this gives us one second as the value of t naught and if you see signal x1 t, t naught was equal to one second. And in this case also it is equal to one second. So we can say that the fundamental time period is not gonna change when you perform the amplitude shifting. So I will quickly write down this point. T naught, which is the fundamental time period is independent, independent of amplitude, amplitude shifting. So this is the new point we have learned in this lecture. And now I will show you this by the help of graph. Here we have calculated T naught by using the formula, but by the help of graph, we will try to visualize the fundamental time period in the two graphs, X1 T and X6 T. So let's quickly plot the graph of X1 T. On your screen, you can see the plot of X1 T. It is simple sine two pi T plot. And if you see the waveform, you can clearly point out the fundamental time period. It is equal to one from here to here is the fundamental time period. And it is equal to one because after this period, the signal is repeating itself. Now we will quickly shift this waveform upward by one so that we have X six T. You can clearly see in this plot, the orange waveform is the waveform of signal X six T. And we have obtained this waveform by shifting the blue waveform, which is the waveform of signal X1 T by one. So this waveform is the waveform of signal X6 T and the blue waveform is the waveform of signal X1 T. And the fundamental time period of signal X1 T is equal to one. This is the fundamental time period of signal X1 T one second. And the fundamental time period of signal X60 is also equal to one. If I draw a line here like this, then you can see the signal is repeating itself after this durations. So the fundamental time period of signal X60 is this one and it is also equal to one second, also equal to one second. So there is no change in the fundamental time period of the two signals 
and we can say that the fundamental time period will not change if you perform the amplitude shifting. So this is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss the effects on fundamental time period when we perform the amplitude scaling.